So I would personally say the 1990s were a bit of a renaissance for Wankel rotary engines. You had cars like the Yunos Cosmo, the Mazda RX-7 obviously, and the Mazda 787B. It was literally a race car and sounded absolutely amazing. So those cars were the 1990s. Of course, the RX-7 was followed up by the RX-8. There also technically wasn't any true successors to the Mazda 787B, unless you include the Mazda Furai, who was a rotary-powered concept car that never went into production. So basically, what we're doing today is building ourselves a Wankel rotary engine in automation, and then we're going to drive it in BMG Drive. So before we continue with today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Opera GX. If you guys don't know Opera GX, it is the best gaming browser of all time, at least in my opinion. It's got some pretty incredible features. The first thing I want to talk about is GX Profiles. The GX Profiles lets you create a custom browser that's perfectly suited to your needs. You could choose from any of the default configurations. For example, Potato Mode, which helps your PC run a lot quicker and smoother. Rogue Mode, which deletes your browsing history upon closing. Streaming Mode, which is good for things like hiding notifications or keeping your private information private. You can even create your own profile by going to Browser Settings, Manage GX Profiles, Create Profile, and then after that, click Add New. And each time you create a new profile, it'll get its own individual icon on your taskbar. There's also a few other features features I want to mention. For example, it's Force Dark Pages. This feature forces dark mode on every page, so you'll never have to experience the blinding white light of a browser ever again. Opera GX also has a quick import tool, which allows you to quickly and seamlessly import all your settings from your previous browser, like browsing history, bookmarks, cookies, and so on. There's also the Hot Tabs Killer, which shows you the most resource draining tabs and closes them to make sure your PC runs as smoothly as possible. Lastly, I also want to mention that Opera GX is also available on mobile. It's called GX Mobile. It has all the features you know and love from Opera GX, but in a sleek mobile package. So if you're a mobile gamer, Opera GX has your back. So absolutely make sure to check out Opera GX today. No, seriously guys, get it right now. Again, huge shout out for them sponsoring the video, but now let's get back to some automation. What's up guys, Rai here. So this is automation and we're building ourselves a race car. And yes, it's going to be powered by a rotary engine. So there's two ways we can really do this. One way is we can actually make the car in automation. It's going to have a traditional piston powered engine, but we can go ahead and swap everything out after that with JB modding. We can swap out the engine 3D model for a Wankel rotary engine 3D model, swap out the sounds and change the stats as well. But after spending a solid hour and a half trying to actually do that and make it function as I wanted, I decided let's go ahead and make the engine with 3D fixtures. It's still going to be a 3D model of a Wankel rotary engine. It's still going to function as a Wankel rotary engine. It's still going to look and sound like a Wankel rotary engine. There actually is 3D fixtures for rotary engines, which we'll see in a bit, so it makes it so much easier. We're also going to use Ange the Great's engine simulator to actually make a Wankel rotary sound. It's going to hopefully sound like a 787B, but different because obviously this is going to be the successor to the 787B. The body in front of us, this is a, <clears throat> this is, I believe, a Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR, which is a different kind of race car than the Mazda 787B was, but this is going to be maybe a, a successor. So the goal is to be very comparable to the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR, probably going to be around 600 horsepower and maybe around 500 pound-feet of torque. So it's going to be a carbon fiber panel material with a monocoque aluminum chassis. Now we can have this thing being a front engine rear wheel drive race car, which would be so crazy because this thing absolutely has rear engine proportions. We're going to go ahead and make it rear engines. Starting off with the engine for this car, it's going to be a three cylinder engine that we modify into a rotor engine. It's going to look like a rotary engine. It's going to sound like one. It's going to drive like one as well. So a three cylinder, we'll make it ALSI, four valve per cylinder ALSI. It's going to be a pretty beefy 2.3 liter, I think. I don't want to completely copy the Mazda 787B's engine. It's just going to be a successor to a rotary car with a different rotary engine. Of course, we want the best of the best for internals here and maybe a pretty high balancing mass as well. Let's go for a high cam profile. BVT all cam sounds fine. It's going to be a pretty, pretty high boost engine with probably a lot of turbo lag, which is totally fine. It's going to have direct injection per cylinder, race intake, race headers. And we'll give it no cats. You know what? We'll actually give it a cat. We'll give it a cat and we'll give it maybe a muffler as well. It's uh, got valve float, but you know what? It's totally fine. Totally, don't worry about it, guys. I got this. I got this. We'll go ahead and give it much higher springs and lifters. So it actually runs a little better now. We'll give it a bigger exhaust because it definitely needs that. And it runs. So right now, 500 horsepower. We'll increase the red line 
to a breezy 9,000 RPM, maybe even 10,000, 10,000 RPM. So it's gotten a bit better. 700 horsepower, 460 or so pound-feet of torque. It makes the power, it kicks at a pretty high, 6,000 RPM. I want to hear what the inline three sounds like right now. Uh, obviously, this is going to be changed to a rotary sound later, but let's just hear what it sounds like. Oh, oh, that is nasty. That is a nasty, that is not good. Yeah, it was at a pretty high 1500 RPM, which is not too, too bad. We'll give it increased quality a little bit more for some other things because it probably needs it. It needs cats definitely though. I want to have cats in this car to give a bigger header size and maybe even a bigger exhaust. So four inch exhaust, which is crazy. 469 nice pound feet of torque and 710 odd horsepower, which is pretty impressive. This is going to be a, a competitor, obviously, to the CLK GTR. So it's gonna have so it's gonna have a six-speed sequential and rear wheel drive, auto manual six-speed, and a very high top speed limiter. Let's go 400 for now. Let's give it an electric LSD because that's a little bit fancy, and this car is definitely pretty fancy. Alloy wheels made on no magnesium wheels, actually. Vented discs, six piston, and four pots in the rear. We'll leave the brake force for now. Let's go to a flow optimized system with no cooling flaps, and this is probably fine. Let's give it a plus five quality though. It's gonna be a one seat race car because this is gonna be like, a, you know, may may maybe this is the race car for the road, but it's still gonna be a one seater with no entertainment. It's gonna have hydraulic, variable hydraulic power steer, which sounds pretty fancy. I like that. Let's give it traction control and ABS, some standard safety, just like some aggressive suspension setup. So semi active sway bars, semi active dampers. The car weighs 2,400 pounds which is very, very light. The CLK GTR is like 3,000 pounds, so we are a little bit lighter than that. We also obviously have a very high top speed. Our 0 to 100 time is actually a lot faster than the CLK as well. Also note, guys, we're going to have lots of arrow in this car to help out with that as well, so we'll leave it like this for now. So I will tune the suspension a bit more later on. The car costs a very, very respectable $42,000. Now, the pricing isn't really as transparent as it was in automation before, so this pricing is definitely not at all accurate. So what we're going to do now is design the car in a time lapse and I'll show you guys how I designed my cars. And then we'll hop into Beeman G Drive where I explain you guys what I did to make my car sound and drive like an insane wankle powered race car. So sit back, relax guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. So we're starting the build for my Mazda 787B successor. Uh, it's going to have this very weird front end. Obviously this is a Mercedes-Benz body. I don't want it to look like the Mercedes-Benz. It's going to have these quad headlamps and a very aggressive front grille. I'm not sure exactly what to do with the upper portion, so I just leave it empty for now. I added the big wing, a hood scoop, some mirrors. I'm just tweaking the headlights now and the main grille of the car, adding a bit more bars, adding the badge for my car company. This is gonna be a French car company that specializes in very quirky cars. And in this case, it's gonna be a mid or rear engine rotary race car. Adding a single wiper, adding a door handle that's very, very low down for some reason, some rear window louvers that look kind of awkward, but that's okay. The rear is a bit challenging for this car. I worked on the tail just a little bit and added a license plate sort of area for the back end. Uh, it's a bit weird to add the rear diffuser on the car, so I add these vents there instead. Then I add some more vents on the sides, and I go ahead and just sort of change the wing and add these third brake lights inside the wing itself, which look really, really, really cool. Adding a bit more details to the front and on the back as well, adding a rear diffuser finally underneath the bottom of the car and dual exhaust for the car. So I finally renamed the car engine name uh, and the car name itself. And now I'm actually making the rotary engine and we're gonna place it in the car once it's done. So I'm changing all the fixture colors, adding a sort of engine made of the car as well. And finished in front of us is the 2000 Leçon SV Turismo GT1. Alright guys, so we're in BMG Drive, we are going to try out the car before we actually convert it to a rotary sound. So we'll go ahead here and grab the Lesson SV Turismo GT1. And, and this is what happens. I, I don't understand what's happening. It, it's just a normal automation car, and every time I spawn it, it just starts flying away. <laughs> All right, so the car finally here, it works. I'm not sure what that bug was. I actually just went ahead and re-exported the car. And the only change I made to it was just changing the position of the steering wheel very, very slightly. 
I don't want to do a quarter mile time. All I want really is a zero to 100 so you guys can get a feel of what this car is before I change the car over to sound and act more like a rotary engine. Now, there actually is a rotary engine underneath the hood here. It's hard to see right now, but uh, there is one there and I have to get rid of the old engine as well. So there's a rotary engine under there. Uh, which we'll look at more later on. Currently, the car, it's it's decently quiet. It's actually not that not that crazy loud. I love the third brake light, though, on the wing like that. That's super cool. Uh, we're just going to do a quick 0-60 to 60 here. Also, my back vent is not, not, is not good. I got to fix that after. So we're going to do a quick 0-60. to 60. So 0 to 100 in 2.13 seconds. I've actually gotten 1.9, so I've gotten sub 2 seconds. Uh, top speed is around maybe 275, 280 kilometers an hour, which is pretty darn good. Uh, it doesn't go with too much faster because of the extreme downforce on this car. So this also works. The car handles pretty good. It sounds actually quite good with a 3-cylinder engine that rips to 10,000 RPM. It's got 700 horsepower, which is nuts. But now we're going to go ahead and change the car to, I think it's going to be maybe a four-rotor sound, because four-rotors sound pretty cool. It's going to sound very similar to the Mazda 787B, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. So now in front of me is Engine Sim by Ange the Great. If you guys don't know, this is a really complex engine simulator that's also kind of a lot of fun to make engines. You can make really goofy engines, you can make really realistic engines, and basically everything in between. So what we're doing is using this to simulate a rotary engine. In particular, this is going to be a four-rotor engine. This is actually one of the default engines that come in the game. It's a 2.2 liter four-rotor engine. I think it's the same engine used in the Mazda 787B, but I could be totally wrong. Who knows? So what we're doing now is we are going to take the sound from this simulator and then we're going to save it into BeamNG Drive. If you guys don't know how BeamNG Drive sounds work, inside your BeamNG file you have two subfolders, the art folder and the vehicles folder. The vehicles folder contains pretty much all the code and some other assets for the car. And the art folder contains the art. In particular, it contains the sound for the car. So if you go into our art folder, into our sound, and we can go to blends. And this folder contains all the sound file names basically for our car. We have a bunch of different sound file names at different RPM intervals. So we have 800, 850, 900, and so on. It goes all the way to 9,814 RPM. Now if we go back here, one folder, and go to the engine sounds, and into this folder, it's got all the .wav files, so all the sound files for all the engine sounds at every single RPM interval. So we have engine sim here, and what we're going to do is actually save the sounds for the car at every RPM interval, and then we're going to put those sounds into our Beam and G mod. If we go ahead and start the engine in front of us by holding A and S, the engine started. It's a little bit loud though, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it just down a bit. I think that's better. Is that better? It's actually still incredibly loud for me, but it's totally okay. And now what I have to do is actually go and we can put it on a dyno here by pressing D and H to hold. So we're going to press D for dyno. The engine turns off. So we got to turn it off. We got to press S to start it up again. All right. So now it's revving on the dyno here. You can see. So what we need to do is hold the RPM at certain intervals. We're going to hold that probably 1,000 RPM, maybe 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6, 7, 8, 9, and maybe 9,500. So we're going to save it at those intervals on and off throttle. Two hours later. All right, so one hiccup. I accidentally recorded all the sounds as MP3 files. So what I did was convert them to .wav files using some online converters. As you can see here, this took a few extra minutes, but now we have 20 or so audio sounds right here on my desktop. We're gonna move them right here. So we have 20 sounds, they are in order. So we have off throttle and on throttle sounds for 1000 RPM to 9000 RPM. And then we also have two sounds that are pretty much at the rev limiter. They're going to be pretty much banging off the rev limiter. So that sounds pretty cool. So what we need to do now is go into our Beam and G Drive mod folder, go into our car, into the art sound engine, this folder. And you can see here, we need to go ahead and actually add all of our .wav files into this subfolder. So into this folder here, we need to add our, our car files. The first thing I want to do is rename them though, just so it's a bit easier to actually to know which files what, because right now we just have a bunch of files here just with numeric names. Probably be easier if I actually converted the names to names that actually mean something. So I've gone ahead and actually renamed all the sound files from the names on the left to the names on the right. So, so we have 1000 O, which is off throttle, and 1000, which is on throttle. So I've pasted these files into my bmng.zip folder. We're going to go back out of it now and go back to the blends file. What we need to do now is actually just change all the sound file names and the corresponding RPM. So right here, at 1000 RPM, it's going to play an audio file called 1000.wav, which we have in our engine folder right here, 1000.wav. 
and we're going to go ahead and do that for all the corresponding audio. We can now go ahead and just go control S or we can go file and save and just save this notepad file. We're going to go ahead and close out of this and then it's going to ask you at least for WinZip because we have the file open right here if it wants us to save this file. We're going to go ahead and press yes and that just overwrites the old file in the archive which is what we're going to do which is what we want. So we're going to go ahead and close it off. Now we can open up BeamNG Drive and hear how the car sounds. All right, so we're in BeamNG Drive with the GT1 car. Uh, it sounds pretty fine at idle. No problems here so far. It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like the typical rap 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 sound of a, of a rotary engine because obviously this is a four rotor engine. If we go ahead and rev it up though and start driving it, it doesn't sound the best. It sounds a little off. I can't quite put my finger on it, but if we actually let, let off the throttle here, So I think what we've done is actually inverted the sounds. So what we need to do is actually go back to the zip file and edit that and just invert which sound file corresponds to on throttle and which corresponds to off throttle. All right, so now if we go ahead and turn the car on, it's gonna sound a little bit better. So if we go ahead and actually rev it here, let's turn it into this. It sounded now a bit more like a four rotor engine. Obviously it's not perfect just yet, uh, I think if we used like double the audio files, it would sound a bit smoother, the transitions from RPM to RPM, but it blends it pretty well. So I think the car is pretty much done. This is the Lasson, I think it's the SV Turismo GT1. And before we actually hop into a real race, I want to do just a drag race to see how this car does and drives the complete finished version. Uh, we're going to turn the car off though, and we will show you guys here quickly. So we got the interior at the steering wheel. If you look behind us, there is our 13B rotary engine. So it is a so it's not a four rotor engine like the car sounds, but it's still a rotary engine nonetheless. So it looks very very good back there. Uh, I mean, if only the car had literally anything else in the in the interior, it's a race car. It doesn't need all those fancy things like seats or uh, or, or door cards or, or, or a gas pedal. It doesn't need all the fancy stuff. Okay, it's perfectly fine. All right, so we're actually in the Nordschleife. This is the map that I have for BMG. Uh, we're going to do one lap around the Nordschleife, which is the Nuremberg ring, to see how fast we can go. Now, I think, like, the world record is for, like, a production car is, like, under, like, what, seven minutes or something like that. Obviously, this is the 1990s, so it's going to be a little bit slower than that. But if we can hit, like, maybe under 10 minutes, nine minutes, that'd be very, very good. Now, I don't think we're going to do that well because I'm actually a pretty terrible driver. My only rule is that I can respawn the car if it gets destroyed, but I can't restart the actual race. So hopefully the car doesn't get too destroyed. Now I'm unsure if I'm going to do it in first person or third person, but we'll start off in first person here. We're going to go ahead and just launch it. Alright, the timer's off. I don't actually know this track that well, um, especially starting out from right here. I thought it was a good place to start, but I don't know it that well starting from here. I've done this track maybe a few dozen times. We're going to break a little bit here. This corner is a little bit glitchy and you can fall through the map, so we got to be careful right here and right up ahead as well. So you can fall through right here. We're going to take this corner nice and tight. And now we're good. Now we're off. No problems with the rest of the race. It sounds quite good. I think it sounds better outside the car, obviously, but inside the car doesn't sound too bad at all. It is very nice to drive, though. On this track, like a nice prep surface, it is very, very sticky, very grippy still. And these tires aren't even the, of the highest quality possible. This is literally my warm-up lap, guys. I haven't done any laps, I swear. This is my first lap, my first attempt. And hopefully it'll be the only attempt. <laughs> well, first and only attempt, Norwich Life with a 700 horsepower rotary race car. Oh, wow, that's a corner. That's a corner. Oh, God, I can't see. I can't see. Okay, we're good. We're gonna keep going here. That's fine. We lost like 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds, something like that. I don't know. I just want it to be in... Uh, wow, the car is absolutely glowing. <laughs> That's so strange. It might be a bit harder to actually race in third person for me, because it's, it's definitely easier to position yourself in first person, but we'll still do our best here in third person, see if we can get a, a, a nice clean lap out of this thing. Under 10 minutes, I'd be very happy with. Again, I don't know this track that well, so I'm breaking a little bit prematurely. A lot of the time, there's a bit of the grass. We're okay. Back the first person for a little bit here because it's definitely easier to drive and I want to set an actual reasonable lap if we can. See, you guys also can't tell, but my steering is set up very, very aggressive on my steering wheel. So I'm, I'm actually only turning my wheel maybe like 5 degrees, 10 degrees to do like a full turn. Uh, it's pretty crazy. 
So it does not take much input at all to turn with this car. Uh, I don't like moving my steering wheel too much. Okay, I was not ready for that corner. Ooh, there's a bit of grass there. A bit more grass. We're going to go slow for a second. Down to third again. Woo! Oh my gosh. Yeah. Low speeds uh, and this thing are scary. I didn't look at that mile marker as well. But I'm sure maybe it was 20. Maybe it was like uh, another number. I, I, I don't know. Oh, is this it? Is this it? This can't be it. Under, almost under seven minutes? Can we, can we break seven minutes here? I don't think so. 6.55, just over seven minutes. And I think if we actually drove like, properly here, under seven, uh, this car can do under seven minutes on the Norwich Uh This might not be exactly fully to scale, but it's pretty gosh darn close. So an insane, Seven minute, 12 second Norwich Schaefer lap. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely insane. All right, so a Porsche Carrera GT in 2003 did a seven minute, 32 second, which is pretty obviously good. And I think this car can do under seven se an under seven minute lap, which would be comparable to probably the best of the best 918 Spider times, uh, 657. So I think we could actually beat that, or maybe a 911 GT3 RS, 991.2 gen. So we're definitely up there for our fastest production car of all time. Definitely up there, definitely top 10 fastest production cars if we actually got a proper lap in by a driver who actually takes risks, unlike myself. I'll leave a download link if you guys want to download this car. It's obviously absolutely cr It is a lot of fun to drive, especially on a tough prep sur- on a really nice prep surface like the Norwich Life. It's very, very fun. Of course, I also want to give a huge shout out to Objects for sponsoring the video. Seriously, guys, check them out right now. Link in the description below. Also, make sure to check out my Discord linked down below. We do automation challenges and we just have a lot of fun there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time. That was, that was intentional, by the way. Very intentional.